Welcome back, guys, to a brand new video on the main channel here. I'm using the podcast set once again. This is the second time I've done this. You guys seem to like the last time because the vibes were laid back. They were immaculate. I feel like I can kind of let my guard down a little bit, come out of my shell, got a little bit of whiskey on the rocks. Unfortunately, the last episode was a body cam. It was a little bit stressful because it wasn't like a satisfying, ooh, she got owned body cam. It was just a tough one to watch. Today is a video that I think is gonna be a little bit more fun. But some people, it might be, we might be tap dancing a little bit because it does concern religion, Christianity. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I found this account the other day uh, on, on Twitter slash X called Christian Nightmares. And all he, basically what he does is he syndicates or he curates cringe Christian content. And what I mean to say by that, and what I wanna to try to make clear is, some of you guys, many of you may know, of certainly people that know me personally, I grew up, very religious. I come from a religious household and I have many people in my life that I care deeply of that are, uh, you know, devoutly Christian and have personal relationships with God or Jesus. And I know many of you watching do as well. So this video isn't about that, whether that's good or bad. I am simply a cringe respecter. Okay. And when I see cringe and it makes me laugh, whether it's about religion or about something completely innocuous that has nothing to do with religion, I'm going to laugh about it. And that's what I'm doing here today. Just to give you a little taste of what we're talking about here, let's let's dive Can in. I preach? Let me preach. Can I teach? Let me teach. Let me teach. Can I preach? Let me preach. Can I teach? Let me teach. Hey, sister Nisi, what is wrong with smoking weed? Nothing. Relaxing and it helps me go to sleep. I'm not addicted. I just need that pain relief. Pain relief? Why mind your business since I'm giving all that grief? All that grief. <laughs> I feel like I instantly just want to become the hype man when I hear this. You just got to finish those bars, you know what I'm saying? With this so far. So it's a natural thing. Girl, when I'm high, I feel like royalty. You feel like royalty, but you're really just a fiend. Not realizing you're messing with spiritual things. One hit, two hit, demons been released. You're opening the door to negativity. Listen, it may come from the earth, it may be natural, but I know some of y'all, all right, whether you believe in God or not, have had that demon release bud before. You had that, oops, I ate too many edibles demon come out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that lying awake on the kitchen floor wondering when it's all going to end demon. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's because this is from Satan or if that's because you just had that extra brownie accidentally not knowing how much was in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but the rap's good. I'm, but I mean, the song itself is kind of higher, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Hallucination, paranoia, no more ambition. One thing to the next, you're really straight tripping. Now the paranoia bar she had right there. Hold on, hold on. That paranoia bar goes hard for me as an adult now. Like, you know, I dabbled as a kid and I've counted millions of times, whatever, growing up, went through phases where it was enjoyable. But in my adult life, it's I can't even look at it now without immediately thinking the feds are gonna come take me to jail or that my life is gonna crumble down around me. For me, it's less of a spiritual abstinence and more of a, requirement to not want to die <laughs> but everyone's got their own reasons for doing things let's keep it popping here resurrection rolls easter's coming up baby hold on am i gonna get cucked by a christian music i feel i've just spent so many years avoiding copyright but i mean there's no reason christian music isn't just as copyrighted right well whatever probably be let's get some christian stock music over this but let's let's finish the resurrection rolls marshmallow represents jesus rolled and melted <laughs> dude if you gotta roll jesus and melted butter for your recipe you're on to something all right that <laughs> uh step three is you roll jesus in the melted butter that's here demonstrated by this here marshmallow and you don't know why yet but you'll know in just a minute why this marshmallow is jesus hang tight Wrapping the crescent bowl represents the burial cloth they wrap Jesus in. It's like Jesus in a blanket. Place an oven representing the tomb. And you will see that the marshmallow was gone. 
just like Jesus was. Because the stone rolled away, he rose from the dead. Now you understand why the marshmallow was Jesus and why you had to roll in them the butter. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Butter's delicious. And don't get me wrong, like, this is totally harmless. I, it's just so funny to me because I grew up around shit like this. You know what I mean? So it really hits close to home. And uh, I'm not knocking it. I mean, this may be a lovely woman, but I get such a kick out of it. I want to reiterate too that, you know, some of the things we're going to watch might be cringe. They might be a little bit radical, whatever it might be. As I've become a bit older, I've, I've clearly, you know, strayed from the devout Christian lifestyle in many ways. I don't, you know, I'm not an atheist per se. I probably lean more towards agnosticism, but I'm a man of principles first in character. So I think, you know, if if you're somebody who is, is of sound character and you think that uh, a strong relationship with God or Jesus is going to enrich your life, I think more power to you. And I love that. Obviously, debating and talking about religion and what's right and what's wrong and who's going to heaven and hell like that's a debate that's been going on for a million years that no one's ever going to get to the bottom to but like i said i am just a cringe respecter so whether or not you love god or you don't believe in them, I think we can all appreciate a little bit of cringe from time to time. Did you know that the solar eclipse happening on April 8th is a lot more crucial than you think? Jesus spoke is about it? Matthew that this evil, adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign shall be given to Love it dudes except like this. for the sign that happened in the days of the prophet Jonah. In Luke, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be as the coming of the Son of Man. <laughs> But you will not believe the path of the solar eclipse will take. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to I'm going to have no problem believing it. And I can't wait for all this bullshit you're about to give me. I love dudes like this because they've been predicting the end of days since fucking B.C., since before Christ even came. You know, I'm saying the Mayan calendar and then it's, you know, the rapture and it's coming now. It's just right around the corner. Look at this thing that's really bad now oh this thing's really bad so obviously the rapture's coming and now we have an eclipse well you know what let me hear him out i don't want to jump to conclusions let's it'll cross over several towns named nineveh <gasps> and even rapture indiana shut but up that's not even the crazy what are the fucking chances rapture indiana honey get the tornado hatches open we're bunkering down sorry this was supposed to be relaxed chills vibes i just can't you a little fucking fired up and shit like this. it also goes over the ark and it'll happen under the constellation Cetus, which means whale, which is what swallowed up Jonah. Subscribe right now if you want to learn more about Jesus and be ready when he comes back. I just, the best, I didn't even notice this till right now, but the dude's TikTok name is Savage Worship. That fucking goes so hard, dude. But yeah. Yo, uh, what's up? Uh, my name's Mike. I just want to say thank you to the congregation for having me. Praise God. Um, you guys can find me on TikTok under Savage Worship. That's at Savage Worship, where I give predictions on every eclipse about whether or not the rapture is going to happen. Uh, this one, you might not know this. You actually probably won't believe it, but I'm going to tell you. The eclipse is going to travel right under the constellation Cetus, which is Peruvian for whale, which is the same creature that swallowed Jonah in the Old Testament. So better say your Hail Marys, brother. Savage Worship uh, on Instagram too. Savage Worship as well. Fucking love it, dude. <laughs> shit is so, this shit is so good. Uh, I do want to reiterate this guy's, this guy, Christian Nightmares. I'm on his Twitter account. He has like an Instagram. He's got a link tree. He's got a newsletter. I'm just trying to give him proper accreditation because he does create a lot of content around this. He's like the same, probably similar history to me where he was raised in, uh, you know, kind of the evangelical Christian household and has since outgrown that into a more secular lifestyle where he sees some of the things he grew up with is through a different lens as a little bit wonky uh per se but you know i have no problem looking at the clips because they're obviously all just curated but he does create a lot of content around this with his newsletter and stuff so i just want to give him uh the proper accreditation that i am looking through his account let's see what else we got here you get to heaven and imagine what that's like i'm imagining what that feels like and imagine who sweet. you get to meet Oh, you get to meet the 50 Babe Ruth. I don't like he, probably, he might not have went who do you get to meet. I don't know. Like, how do you get to how do you get to decide who you get to meet? You just have to assume that you know what people's personal walk with God was. Right. Like maybe they had some, some fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what about like that priest that you loved in middle school? Do you going to see him in heaven? What about when it came out 10 years later that he was touching kids? Like, what about? I don't know. 
Can you repent from that? Or is that like a, is that like a deal breaker? I don't like, how do you know? Five people that signed our Declaration of Independence. You get to meet James Madison, Abraham Lincoln, John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, George Washington. Fuck yeah, dude. That's uh, I'm all I wake up every morning. I'm like, bro, I cannot wait to get to heaven so I can shake George's hand. It's gonna be sick. Imagine George and Abe in the same room, huge fucking beards and Abraham Lincoln top hats. It's gonna be dope. The audacity for this man to think that he knows the personal relationship these men had with God. Now, granted, there's obviously a lot of writings and we our country was founded uh, on this kind of Christian Protestantism, evangelicism in many cases. So. So I understand why that belief is there, but it is interesting to just kind of start cherry picking people that you're you're sure you're going to see in heaven, like that are especially that are, you know, from two, three centuries ago. And you just assume that, oh, yeah, I've read a couple writings and I know that they've kind of been glorified in history. So certainly they must be in heaven. God, this resurrection roll is making me so hungry, dude. I just want to reiterate how delicious a Jesus marshmallow is when you roll it in butter. It's unbelievably to die for. I also want to re uh, reiterate that uh, I appreciate you guys for supporting this channel and allowing me to do sponsors like I'm doing right now as we talk about today's video sponsor and get back to some of this uh, incredible content here. Cold turkey might be delicious the day after Thanksgiving with a little cranberry sauce and stuffing, but there's often a better way to break bad habits. And no, I'm not talking about paying a guru to hypnotize it out of you or using incense to scare away the bad spirits. I'm talking today's video sponsor, Fume, and how they treat the problem in a unique and effective way. Fume is an innovative flavored air device that removes some of the bad from your habit without destroying your comforts. No electronics, no vapors, no dead batteries. It's completely natural, just flavored air and pleasant all natural flavors without harmful chemicals. The craftsmanship feels amazing and with an adjustable airflow dial and magnetic mechanics, Fume is designed with fidgeting in mind. They also launched Base in January, which is a weighted stand for your fume that attaches via a magnet that lets you spin it around for more fidgeting glory. Now listen, I was skeptical at first, but after I ripped open a crisp mint pack and inserted the core, I couldn't believe how pleasant it was. And I get to fidget with it. Double win. If you're looking for that edge to help you stop something you've been putting off, I think Fume could really be what you're looking for. It's easy, it's enjoyable, and the success stories continue to pile up as over 150,000 customers have been served so far. And you can join Fume and help accelerate humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. So go to tryfume.com slash Leon Lush or scan the QR code here on screen and use code Leon Lush to get 10% off your journey pack. That's tryfum.com and use code Leon Lush for 10% off your order today. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. So here are some church words that could totally be baby. Uh, I'm cringing the already. One. Sermon. No. I mean, like, that sounds like great. Hi, Sermon. Oh, that, oh. oh, she caught me off guard with that. That could have been any name. It was just the way she said it. Got me a little, got me in the back of the neck there. But no, this one just no. Alter. Great boy's name. Great girl's middle name. Okay, third one we're going to get. I mean, to be honest, like, I'm going to give a shit for coming up with these names, but I can't really. I mean, you look at some of the names these Hollywood freaks give their kids, and uh, these aren't any crazier, Creative. honestly. Tambourine. Oh. It's got a ring to it. Think about it. It's got a little ring to it. And you can short. Oh, God. First of all, don't you just. You, you can't own the tambourine. Christianity doesn't own the tambourine, okay? It's not a church word. Tambourine is an instrument. I understand that one of the guys in your praise band is too untalented to play anything else, so they let him stand up there with the fucking tambourine during We Raise Our Hands or Almighty God, whatever. But that can be played. You could play the tambourine in a death metal core band as well if you wanted to. So don't pretend like tambourine's a church word. Fucking Tammy. Bring it and call her Tammy. Fourth one's kind of pretty. Like, it kind of is. Sanctuary. Like, sanctuary. It just has this regal, beautiful, lovely, feminine feel to it. I'm not even going to disagree with her there. I could see I could see someone naming their daughter Sanctuary. Still cringe, but like, that's so far. Okay, that's this the, one's a winner. I'll allow so it. So far. So far. That is a strong boy's name. And if there's twins, okay. What the fuck is Shofar? I'm pretty well versed in Bible lore, okay? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know who Barabbas is, like the whole nine. But what the fuck is a Shofar? We gotta look. Ah, oh, it's one of these big ass horns they blow out of. Is that like a Christian thing? It's an ancient musical horn typically made of a ram's horn used for Jewish religious purposes. Okay, so, okay. If there's twins, tithe and offering. Oh, gee, what? <laughs> <laughs> they sound cool to me, I don't know. 
Well, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just being a good Christian. I'm trying to come up with good Christian names. Well, let's check this one out here. Do you ever wonder if Jesus, the son of a carpenter, smelt the wood of the cross and briefly thought about home? <sighs> Man, I'm just picturing like sitting around. You're like a stay-at-home mom. You know what I'm saying? Husband makes six figs. You're just chilling. Couple of kids. You actually have twins named Tyler and Offering inside playing with the King James version of the Bible. And you're like, you know what? I think I should make a TikTok to see if I can lift up Christ somehow. And you come up with this bullshit. <laughs> like, like Jesus was hanging on the cross. Like, holy shit. Is this birch? Yeah. Oh, this reminds me of my dad's wood shop. This is lit. The fuck kind of TikTok is this? What are you talking about? Do you ever wonder if Jesus, the son of a carpenter, smelt the wood of the cross and briefly thought of home? <laughs> Nobody's ever fucking wondered that. That's insane. Tithe, offering, shut the fuck up. I'm making a goddamn TikTok. Anyways, guys, I was just praying and it popped into my head. I wanted to see what you'd think. Be sure to follow and subscribe for more God-related TikToks. <laughs> The best part is she's like, she's lamenting. She's just standing just introspectively by a pool in like a $1.3 million home, probably. I don't know that. I'm just spitballing. Holy fuck, that one got me. That one got me. I like to complain. Oh, Jesus, what is this? I'm nothing but a pain. Two minutes That's and 14 seconds? Say. No. Mm -mm. No chance. Mm -mm. We never go on dates. Get home from work too late. You know, that's what my wife say. Mm -hmm. That's what my wife say. Can we make it Christian, mm -hmm. please? And we keep wine. Mm -hmm. We do is fight. Self, 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 self. Here we go. And then they turn to God and everything's fine, is it? Well, I don't know. Is it Christian to just fucking dunk on your spouse for an entire Taylor Swift cover? What are we doing here? Her cooking makes me gag. My marriage is a drag. Jesus. In our mind. Cause God offers us some help, 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 Here we go. This is the best. So this whole parody is like, I hate my spouse. My wife sucks. My husband's a piece of lit, lazy piece of shit with stinky socks. But we'll stay together because God. I get it. Cool. Bro, I just, can you imagine making this? Oh my sweet mother of mercy. I want to be honest, if I'm a lyric interpreter, okay, the only thing you're putting off is your eventual divorce. I apologize. I'm sorry. I know that's not allowed uh, in the Christian faith, although it does still happen. Uh, but, you know. God's not a huge fan. There's a special place in my heart for like, there's some of the stuff we've watched obviously is like Christian related content, but when people take um, secular things and try to inject religion into it, that's one of my favorite genres of content. So obviously it happens a lot with music. There actually is a TikTok trend that's been around for a while where people do exactly this. They take secular songs and just remake the lyrics so that they're honoring God. Yeah, you know, again, it's harmless, but I, I can't help but just smile. It does, it makes me just, it's just funny, dude. I don't know, I don't know why. Logistically, I think of it like that person, they're doing a couple things. A, they're trying to make a TikTok, but B, you know, tick, they're trying to do it in a way that's not sinful. So, you know, you don't want to sing along with a secular song because God wouldn't like that. So you can do the same cover, but just make it lyrics about Jesus and then it's fine. So then you can try to go on TikTok and get the clout by doing the covers, but you're not associated with those devil worshiping secular uh, music industry heathens, you know? It's a win-win, uh, quite frankly, it's it's wonderful. Words of wisdom. So Could use at some. this time in the book of Revelation, which is being played out. This does, uh, yeah, this, this woman, the seashell, polka seashell necklace, this one look and you know she's a book of revelations respecter, right? 
That's the kind of the same thing with the end of days. It's people have been saying for centuries that, oh, this is well, if you read in the book of Revelations, this is the sign that the rapture is coming. OK, I'm ready for it, man. Bring it on. We're all being tested, basically judgment. And you're given tests. Whether you know it in your mind, you don't know it because you're not quite awake. But in your subconscious, you're thinking, hmm, pretty soon you're going to think, hmm, I'm being tested. You're exactly right. Tested for what? Tested to make sure you're always going to do the right thing. You're not going to steal. You're not going to lie. You're not going to cheat. Where are you going with this, Grandma? You're not going to be greedy. You're not going to be obese. You're going to be tested over and over and over again. Sorry, did you... Did she say you're not going to be obese with a, t with a T on the end? Or a D? Was that a T or a D? Let's run that back. You're not going to be greedy. You're not going to be obese. You're going to be... T obese. <sighs> yeah, that's actually... This is in the book of Samuel. It's, it's actually something called obesteality. It's a combination of having a proclivity, a sexual proclivity for animals and being severely overweight obese eality she just obese for short um so yeah you definitely you don't you want to you don't want to be tested for obese deality obesity tested over and over and over again you're going to get happy what? and you'll be tested until you're happy huh? welcome to the awakening god bless each and every one of you <laughs> <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. <laughs> I think I just got obese from watching that, dude. What was that? Listen, I listen. I, I don't disagree with the core message. We are, you are. Life is just a series of tests that you have to respond to in one way or the other. And the interesting thing too is I, I know that anytime I make videos where I just touch briefly, sarcastically even on something that has to do with religion, like I've done a lot of uh, prosperity preacher videos in my years on YouTube. You guys know how I feel about those fucking charlatans. But I don't, you know, I don't like to take, again, I don't like to take the piss out of people who genuinely just have a, a particular way of living their life or a belief or, or a relationship with, with a deity or Jesus or whatever, if they think that's what's going to enrich their lives as long as they have a good character, they're sound morally. And, and frankly, most of my moral fiber comes from kind of this conservative upbringing and i'm very grateful for my childhood and how i was raised i've just kind of separated from kind of the theology piece of it and just internalized some of the character elements but as i've gotten older i've just you know been able to separate from the character elements that i've internalized and then some of the more like the religion in a box type of thing where it's the theological like you have to believe this or you're wrong type of stuff that that stuff i've stay away from and I'm more just like appreciative of some of the foundational moral teachings that have helped me in my life. We've also seen time reversal miracles where a body what? part goes back in time like 30 years. Yeah, wow. So I'm in Nebraska and the Lord have said we? to me, in heaven there's no time, right? I go, yeah, Lord, I preach on that. Well, there's a man here about in his 70s. He's had several heart attacks, stints, surgeries, command his heart to go back 30 years. Wow. So I just declare it not knowing who it is. Yeah. Then I asked them to check, you know, is anyone here? And this man comes up, he had, it was him, 72 years old, heart surgeries, even had scars. Yeah. Not only was he healed, he didn't feel the stents in his heart. He opened his shirt up and all the cuts from the surgeries were gone. What? And I, and I said, Lord, 30 come years on. back, and that was right a few years before he ever had heart problems. So it's like, time, like the sun stood still with Joshua. Yeah. So time reversals, because so how you do it is you go in the glory realm, as we talked yep. about last show. Now you're in the timeless realm. Yep. And then once you're there, you, you, have, you have time travel. You know, you can command things to come back and forth because you're in a timeless realm. I'm always so perplexed because I just genuinely don't know if people like this believe what they're saying or are they just so entrenched in the grift? Like they obviously are making money somehow as in prosperity, evangelicism or something running a show that people watch and call in or send money to don donate to whatever it is but like can you actually can this motherfucker sit down next to me and watch this back and look me in the eyes and be like oh yeah oh yeah yeah he came over he pulled his he literally pulled his shirt off and all of his open heart surgery scars had disappeared did they 
Did they really? Yeah, you wouldn't have believed it. He came out right after he showed me the scars disappearing. He coughed and all of his stents just came out of his mouth. And also a huge rainbow dildo as well. But that was weird. That was from Satan. But you wouldn't believe it. The time reversal in the, in the spirit realm. It's incredible what we're doing. Like I, I get it. Like in the prosperity videos I've done, this isn't any different than having, you know, the, the stooge person with the cane walk up on stage and then smash them in the forehead and all of a sudden they're running around the congregation fucking with healed osteoporosis or whatever because this is why i struggle with it so badly because is he so deluded that he actually believes what he's saying you can't possibly believe that because the only other alternative is that you're so evil right the opposite of what you're preaching you're so evil that you're this deep into the grift you're willing to just blatantly lie and be a conniving snake just to fleece people for money and it's like i just it's hard for me to imagine oh my god the jesus on the cross pez dispenser you know what hold on a second it smells like my pop's old wood shop <laughs> that was the crown of thorns also made of wood Let's skip a little bit but I'm, I'm gonna give you this give it to me somebody told me one time i don't have to preach it all at the same time i could cut it like subway and give you a six inch in the morning and a six inch at night that's not my style i'm gonna shove this entire foot long down your throat mm. <laughs> damn it reverend at least give me a warning when you're about to verbally assault me like that Woo! that's the type of question that makes a man quite frankly are you a six inch in the morning and six inch at night type of guy or do you just like to take that foot long and have it crammed down your throat all at one go? If I'm being a candid, I'm a 6 a.m., 6 p.m. kind of guy, but after one more of these, I'm doing the whole foot. <laughs> the devil is kind of like this magnet. He's just roaming around. Is he? Seeking whom he may devour. What's going on with this woman's Amen. face, dude? You notice there was a few there he didn't get. We'll say that was us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sometimes a anti is worth a thousand words. So the enemy just roams around. Ah, missed that one. Wow. <laughs> Must have spent time with God this morning. Did my devotions. Devil magnet ain't got shit on me. I've been to church. This lady's kind of lit though, because at least she's putting on a bit of a show. It's like a blend of Chris Angel and Peter Popoff, kind of. You get a little bit of both. You go into church, you get the community, and then you get a magic show at the same time. And maybe, actually the best part of church, quite frankly, is the refreshments afterwards. My old place used to have like fucking donuts and like some days that have potluck dinners. The coffee was kind of fire. Like, there's definitely some perks to being part of the congregation. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Okay. How amazing is it that the God who created this world sent his son to die for us so that we can be saved? <laughs> dude, how amazing is it that the God who sent his only son to die for us created a dude with pecs this fuck? ripped love that i love like a good i've seen a few of these uh, uh, where it's like you're kind of thirst trapping but you're just talking about bible verses over the top of it but flexing something underneath it. it's clever i like it easter is a part of people thinking it's easter bunny and finding easter eggs but really is to know the death on the cross that jesus christ died so that if we just believe in him we will be saved as romans 10 9 says if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god is raised from the dead you will be saved and that is an amazing thing and something to think about each and every single day yeah yeah that's amazing and you can think about all that stuff but also what do you think about these upside down push-up fucking handlebars i'm doing Do my pecs look good can you see my shoulder striations comment and like make sure to subscribe for more workout videos with bible verses over the top we were talking about this if you, know you have already said yes to something listen to me so carefully if you've already said yes to something and then leading up to it you do not want to go you're getting sick you're just tired you don't want to go all these uh, what if i just skipped that is because god has something so big for you there mm. and the devil wants to steal it Whoa. if you say yes what? to something in the spirit and you're like lit you're like okay yeah i'm gonna commit to these plans this is gonna be great and then like leading up to it you know that feeling like last minute where you're like i want to just stay in my pajamas i don't want to go sounds like work I don't know. I'm scared. And then you say no, bro. That is an attack from the enemy because he knows 
knows that that could be fruitful for you to go to. <laughs> Hold on, let me. Can we just run back that row, that wall real quick? And the devil wants to steal it. Whoa. Whoa. Yes, oh my God! The, the devil is that like what's happening? The devil wants to steal my moment. That's why I got the flu. Like I committed to go to my friend's house for the game, and then I got the flu and I canceled. And in hindsight, I'm like, God, I should have went because the devil was trying to steal that moment from me. And he had, the Lord had something so big for me. If I just took the flu there and got everyone else sick, I could have leveled up. What? What? If you've already said yes to something and then I'm leading up to it, love you this. do not want to go. You're you getting sick. You're just tired. Sick. You don't want to go. All these, uh, what if I just skipped? That is because God has something so big for you there mm. and the devil wants to steal it. Whoa. Whoa. If you say yes to something where you're like, I want to just stay in my pajamas. I don't want to go. Sounds like work. I don't know. I'm scared. And then you say no, bro, that is an attack from the enemy. Because Like, listen, on another, uh, on another parallel, like I kind of agree minus the getting sick part. And I've talked about this before on my on my channel where like you do need to intentionally commit and put yourselves in situations that maybe make you uncomfortable because that is how you grow, right? The way this is framed is just a little more silly. Certainly if you're sick, you can probably reschedule, but uh, the idea of committing to something and then seeing it through, even if it feels uncomfortable, I can get behind that. So maybe I am Christian actually, after all, maybe I should start a Christian TikTok account. So many kids are like, there's a monster under my bed. And parents are like, it's just, just your imagination. Go just go yeah. to sleep. No, We're it's tired. the devil, isn't it? Just go to sleep. It's not real. I'm like, well, what if it is? Uh, what if it is? And you are just you so your desensitized kids? to the spirit realm that there is something under their bed. And maybe it's just their imagination. Maybe it's not, though. And so, in, in, you know, that was kind of a rule for us. It was like, maybe don't say that. Mm -hmm. Don't say it's not real. Don't say it's not... Um, now his kids are fucking traumatized. Imagine telling your five-year-old that. Like, Daddy, there's a monster under my bed. And instead of being like, it's okay, I got it. Oh, psh, I killed him. He's dead. You're safe, buddy. Don't worry. You're like, well, son, there is a monster under your bed. It's called the spirit realm. And we don't really know what's going on there, but he lives there all the time. And unfortunately, you're going to have to sleep above him, above him for the rest of your life. And he's going to try to attack you and he's going to try to coax you into coming under the bed so he can torture and hurt you. But you don't know when that's going to happen. Anyways, love you. Good night. <laughs> it's just your imagination. Don't squash that thing because this may be a gift. This may be them seeing, sensing. Mm -hmm. I feel scared. I see this thing. It's saying this to me. So I'm hearing, I'm interacting with this thing and you're telling me it's not real well little by little that kid desensitizes himself and shuts down spiritual gifts spiritual senses yeah my son also thinks he's a ninja a professional hockey player uh better than jason tatum at basketball he thinks he's mario from super mario brothers he thinks he has superpowers and he thinks that he's better at everything that he does than me his dad which is obviously untrue. He genuinely believes those things. So if your son thinks there's a monster under his bed and you're like, buddy, I'm sorry to tell you, but there, yeah, there is. There, there's a spiritual monster under your bed and he's out to get you. He's gonna take you for your word and he's gonna be tormented for his entire childhood. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hi, I'm Janine Turner. Welcome to Christoga, Christian yoga. Yoga filled body, Christ filled soul. Oh my God. Christoga. Drawing your hands back beneath your shoulders, inhale. Exhale your shoulders above your hips. Interlace your hands and extend your arms. Inhaling. Exhaling to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to your left. Inhale to center. Exhale your arms behind your head. Inhaling. Extend your arms in vertical. You know, it's funny. I just unrelated, but I saw a post on Twitter the other day from one of these like fringe freak, like cult, I don't know, like some sort of pill. Twitter accounts that go out, are all conspiracy centric and it was about how yoga like if you're a Christian you can't practice yoga because it's derived from spiritual paganism from the Middle East and everything about yoga is pagan and against the will of God or something it was an interesting post <laughs> truly fascinating I'm like I thought aren't they aren't you just like aren't they just like stretching 
<laughs> Isn't that what yoga is? Is it stretching? I wasn't aware it was pagan, but okay. I'm going to speak to those of you who are lactose intolerant. I have had so many of you asking me, Kathy, would you please do a prayer for lactose intolerance? So in the name of Jesus, I come against lactose intolerance right now in Jesus name. I speak and decree that your digestive system so receives good. and processes dairy properly in the name of Jesus Christ. Stop. No blood no diarrhea, no upset stomach in the name of Jesus Christ. I command your body to have <laughs> chemical balance in processing food, your digestive tract to work normally, your stomach, gallbladder, liver, colon, intestines in the name of Jesus Christ. I break this curse off of you and I speak and decree Jesus's healing over you. Friends, Keep believing, praying, and listening to this reel and be healed. I uh, I have no words. I have no words except in, except intestines. That's a new word I just learned. Intestines. In Jesus' name. Well, this has been fun. I'm so glad you joined me. If you enjoyed this too, thanks for being here. If uh, this made you uncomfortable and offended you, um, well, then I'm clearly lost and I would appreciate your prayer. But regardless of your religious affiliations, I hope that we can all believe in at least hip thrusting that motherfucking like button and subscribing if you haven't. I appreciate your time. I can't wait to see you in the next video. And uh, thanks, Christian Nightmares, for the curated feed. Cheers. We'll see you next time. Peace.